I sometimes get criticism for creating content specifically for men, focusing mainly on women who have NPD or other cluster B personality disorders or traits and the psychological abuse that these women inflict on their male partners. Some people don't appreciate this angle and they want to know why a lot of my content is gender specific. I'm Lisa Blanc, therapist, author, and life coach. And in today's video, I will explain my top three reasons for providing information, resources, uh, and videos specific to men who are experiencing relationship abuse. And I will also explain 10 ways that the symptoms of narcissistic personality disorder can manifest differently in men versus women. While I do recognize the widespread issue of abuse and violence affecting women on a daily basis, it's also important to acknowledge that men are also victims of narcissistic abuse. For years, there has been education and resources about narcissism in men and the devastating effects of narcissistic abuse on women, but it's only recently that men have started to share their own experiences as victims of this type of abuse. And believe me, it's no less painful for them. Unfortunately, throughout my 25 year career as a therapist and director of mental health and addictions programs, I found that there is a significant lack of awareness when it comes to this issue, creating the misperception that this is an uncommon problem. So my first reason is simply to raise awareness in hopes of helping men identify, recognize, and avoid the devastating consequences of unknowingly engaging in a romantic relationship with a female covert narcissist. Second, societal expectations encourage men to adopt a strong protector role while discouraging them from acknowledging and talking about their problems and emotional struggles or from seeking help. And sadly, Reaching out for help is sometimes seen as a sign of weakness, and those who do come forward sometimes face stigmatization instead of validation. They're dismissed or even blamed for the abuse. So my second reason is to validate men and let them know that they're not alone, they're not weak, and they're not to blame for the abuse. My third reason, although perhaps overly optimistic, but that's just me, deep down, I hope that some women watching these videos who are displaying these traits and behaviors will recognize their toxic tactics and realize that it's not okay, it's abusive, and that maybe some will be motivated to seek treatment and to change. So, these are my reasons. Um, this is why I think it's important that we talk about NPD in women and how it affects men. Um, although the diagnostic criteria is the same regardless of gender, there are some researched and documented differences when it comes to uh, gender influences and narcissistic personality disorder. If you want to learn more about the diagnostic criteria, just click on the link above. Okay, so number one, some research suggests that covert narcissism is more common in women, while overt narcissism is more common in men. Male narcissists present with more externalizing symptoms, such as aggressiveness, impulsivity, and grandiosity, whereas females present with more internalizing symptoms, such as anxiety, depression, and somatic complaints. Number two, Men are more likely to have a comorbid substance abuse disorder as well as cluster A personality disorders, which include paranoid personality disorder, schizoid, and schizotypal personality disorders. Men are also more likely to have co-occurring antisocial personality disorder or antisocial traits. Women, on the other hand, more often present with co-occurring eating disorders and mood disorders such as major depression or bipolar disorder. Number three, their manipulation tactics vary. For example, women typically use guilt, neglect, and seductive behaviors to manipulate their partners or others, whereas men are more likely to use intimidation and physical force. Number four, 
Both men and women with NPD can display anger and narcissistic rage. However, men are more prone to these explosive expressions of anger, whereas women are more likely to express anger in passive aggressive ways. And this is a style of expressing negative emotions in an indirect or subtle way rather than addressing the issue openly and directly. So it involves behavior that might appear on the surface to be passive or non-confrontational, but underneath the surface, they carry a massive load of anger and aggression. Common examples of passive aggressive behavior include things like using sarcasm to belittle someone without directly confronting them, procrastinating and delaying tasks or responsibilities to express frustration and resistance, Backhanded compliments, which are those lovely compliments that are laced with insults and criticism. Then there's the good old silent treatments. Or maybe it's sabotaging um, by subtly and secretly undermining your efforts, plans, or projects. These are just some examples of passive aggressive behavior. And if you'd like me to elaborate on this topic, just let me know in the comment section. Number five, women with NPD tend to exhibit greater concern with body image and physical appearance, often obsessed with looking young and being sexually appealing. Men with NPD may also be overly concerned with their looks, but generally it's to a lesser extent as they tend to be more focused on financial success and material gain. Number six, female covert narcissists present as the damsel in distress needing rescue from a heroic figure. They play up their vulnerability and fragility to elicit empathy from others. Generally speaking, a female narcissist struggles more with emotional sensitivity and reactivity than males, but again, it is possible that men are simply conditioned to suppress and conceal their emotions. Number seven, research suggests that females with NPD, although they lack empathy in comparison to non-narcissists, they do have more empathy and display less callousness than males with NPD. Number eight, men with NPD have higher scores on extroversion than females and women tend to rely more on avoidance behaviors to cope, whereas men rely more on risk-taking and thrill-seeking behavior to cope with their symptoms. Number nine, female narcissists are more likely to fly under the radar and are more difficult to detect than male narcissists. Number 10, Females are more likely to receive psychological treatment, but not necessarily to treat their personality disorder. More often, it's to treat other conditions or situational crises. Men are less likely to access psychotherapy, and if they do engage in therapy, they're more likely to drop out. Again, one of the reasons for this might have to do with societal expectations around masculinity and what it means to be a real man. Understanding gender differences can help us recognize how narcissistic traits, behaviors, and symptoms manifest differently in men and women. But there are still many questions remaining about the origins of these gender differences. It's not clear whether these distinctions stem from gender-related disparities or traditional gender roles, or if they are inherent to the disorder itself. Soon I will post a video about gender differences in BPD and lastly to learn more about the toxic tactics of the female covert narcissist please click on the link above.